We now turn to Matthew 2, verses 3 through 6. Here are God's words. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened in all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. It came upon a midnight clear, was reflected upon along with this scripture passage by Chuck Cunningham. Listen now to the words that he writes for us today. The Christ child's birth came in the middle of the night. It was marked by angels singing and a star shining bright, getting the attention of both those near and far. Magi is the plural of the Latin magus, a magician or astrologer, and derives probably through the Greek from an old Persian word for a member of the priestly caste, often with overtones of magic. Where the idea of the three kings arose is not clear to me, but it seems to have come about during the third century AD. Mr. Greetham also notes that several other features of the nativity tradition do not really conform to the biblical account in the writing the nativity pages. The time required for the Magi to arrive via Herod's palace would be expected to cover perhaps 40 to 50 miles. He also observes that pageantry, to the contrary notwithstanding, wealthy people of the region traveled by horseback, a much easier ride than aboard a camel. This means that the baby Jesus might have been some months old when they arrived. Note that Herod ordered the slaughter of all children aged two years or less, corresponding with the time he had ascertained from the astrologers. A further suggestion that the time had lapsed and events had changed the situation comes from the 11th verse. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary. Evidently, the family had moved from the stable to more appropriate quarters. And now we are moved to say, so what? The celebration is the birth of the Messiah, not of the historical imperatives of the first century. If tradition calls for the adoration of the baby Jesus, the details are less important than the purpose. The collision of history with poetry has caused hair-splitting arguments for centuries, and poetry is often the winner because emotion is so ingrained in the human physique. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, help us to see through tradition and pageantry to the meaning of the season. We are so often caught up in the things we do and make and buy and unwrap that Jesus may become wrapped in layers of meaningless tinsel. Help us see your beauty and majesty and to realize the folly of our self-important actions. Help us to see the simplicity and the wonder of your birth. Amen. <laughs> 